So as Spurs push towards the first division, this is the team that looks for a valuable win today. Now without Don McAllister, who is serving a one-match suspension after being sent off last week at Brighton. Jerry Armstrong, that striker-turned defender, fills the gap at the centre of the defence. Otherwise, it's a Tottenham side that's had a good run, largely unhampered by serious injury, although they have lost two of their last three, and it's a bad time to start faltering like that. As for Sunderland, no prizes for them this season, and their recent run with only one defeat in nine games came to a halt on Tuesday night when they were again in London, and this time lost 3-1 at Millwall. Bobby Kerr, still their best-known player, and the sole survivor from those heady days of 1973 at Wembley. So there we go, Sunderland in blue shirts and white shorts. Spurs in white shirts, attacking the goal to our right. At the start of a really critical week for Tottenham, three games left, today's at home in Widwick against Hull and away to Southampton next Saturday. And really at this precise moment, disregarding results in other games, Spurs want four points for promotion. And they could well do with two of them today. And Peter Taylor going in! And a goal! In 28 seconds, Spurs go into the lead. What relief and joy and sorrow for Barry Siddle in the Sunderland goal. He's not yet touched the ball. And for Spurs 1-0, came in high, Peter Taylor was the man who nicked in. So it's Henderson. Kerr, Rostron. Perriman there with him. Doherty turning it in to Gregoire. And Raul, and Raul! 1-1! Well, it was a mistake by Jerry Armstrong, the stand-in uh, defender for Don McAllister. And uh, as that came in, the mistake was there by Armstrong and Gary Rowell. Hits it into the roof of the net to bring Sunderland back on level terms. Spurs won, Sunderland won. Here's Bobby Kerr, laid back this time for Henderson. There's another chip, and again, there's just a little too much on it, but Rostam will get it with support here from Bolton. And Sunderland still playing a very relaxed game of football. Doherty playing it now for Henderson. Kerr available on the right, chipped in again towards Raul. But the whistle had gone for offside before that ball thudded against the Tottenham crossbar. And again, the first pass was wildly off the mark. He's got a chance to make another one. Duncan played back for Pratt again, played in for Jones. There are plenty of them up. Taylor's there as well. The little chip going in. Oh, and he hit the post with it. Oh, terrible luck there for Peter Taylor. That's one of his stocking trades, those lovely little curling shots. Siddle desperate to get across his goal. The ball hitting the post. Naylor coming up alongside him to support, and so is Hoddle. Here's Hoddle. Jones playing it back again for Hoddle. Will he let one go this time? No, it was Raul who got in the way, and Rostron who can bring it out. Gregoire and Lee are up for him, and coming up fast here is Mick Doherty. What a good break by him. That's a cross towards Bob Lee on the far side. The header there, and it's into the net by Lee, and Spurs are behind. That's 17 and a half minutes into the second half. And Bob Lee has put them into the lead, Sunderland. A great run-up by Mick Doherty. And his cross to Lee on the far side, who had three or four yards to himself. And although Barry Dane's got a hand to it, he couldn't stop it going into the net with Gregoire in very close attendance. So, Spurs, after a start that produced a goal in 28 seconds, now find themselves a goal behind. And is this slide of theirs at this disastrous time in the season, so near to the end when it looks so sure for them for so long, is that slide going to continue? Sunderland have already got their substitute, Sean Elliott, changed. And Hoddle bringing it in now. And Duncan on the turn, and Siddle with the save. 
as though there might have been an infringement there before the ball got to Duncan. When it did get to him, uh, it didn't really have a shot with a lot of conviction about it. As Siddle went down. Away to Lee. Well, if Spurs don't watch it, they could be caught out again. They've got a lot of men forward and they've got to bring them back. And there's Kerr onside. Linesman kept his flag down. Played it again. And another goal by Lee. 3-1. Well, that's a disastrous moment again for Tottenham. They've taken a chance by putting Perryman right up front. And they were badly caught out. Bobby Kerr onside, Linesman kept his flag down, a low cross coming in. And uh, Lee put it away with ease. And Spurs requiring two goals for a point. Naylor. Taylor. That's a good cross. And Perriman's right in there. Oh, and he's hit the post. Lovely cross again by Peter Taylor. Perriman on the far side. Controlled it well. From this angle, it looked as though he hit a post. Follow again. And now Naylor. It comes again. Jones with a header, and Duncan got the touch. Well, we could be in for a finish. Eight minutes to go. As that long cross came in. It was touched there, first of all, and then secondly, Duncan just put that little nick in there. Enough to put it wide of Siddle. Spurs to Sunderland three. Three minutes of time added on, and now it is all over. It's a victory for Sunderland. So a full-time score then at White Hart Lane, Spurs 2, Sunderland 3. It was apparent as early as that first Sunderland goal after 16 minutes that Spurs were in a bit of trouble. When the ball's lifted in here to young Roland Gregoire, just look, as a miscontrol there, but just look as he gets it back again, the room that he's given, the time to turn, surrounded by five Tottenham players, and he flicks it in, and Raoul just gets a touch with his head. And it's where here that Jerry Armstrong, not a defender, of course, makes his error. But look at the number nine there, completely unmarked also inside that Tottenham penalty area. And there was another example in that first half where Spurs were giving Sunderland so much room on the edge of the box. There's Will Froster. Now, how on earth can you allow a forward that amount of room on the edge of a penalty area? And it was as well for Tottenham on that occasion that uh, Rostron miscontrolled it and Hoddle was able to get in there and snuff out the danger. But when they went 2-1 down, they instantly put Steve Perryman up. Uh, to me, they overreacted a little bit there because they left themselves so loose with just three men at the back. And indeed, it was from this particular move uh, that Sunderland got the killer third goal. Remember, when they went 2-1 up, Sunderland, there were still some 25 minutes left. And Spurs really had panicked at that point. And now we're just three men at the back who got caught very square here. We'll stop this in a moment. There they are, look, absolutely square, just those three men in defence, and they were very vulnerable indeed. Lee, in fact, a lovely pass through here for Bobby Kerr. What an inspiration he is still to Sunderland. He was onside, he could easily get in behind the defenders. A nice little touch inside, a good piece of finishing by Bob Lee, and Spurs then were in real, real...